In this session, we're going to answer a structural analysis question asked by a student. Consider a highway bridge consisting of four spans, each having a length of 18 meters. How do we determine the maximum negative bending moment at support B? Let's limit our discussion to the analysis of the beam due to vehicular loads only. A side note, in solving this problem, we are going to use a beam analysis software tool that we have developed for educational purposes. You are welcome to download and use it for analyzing continuous beams. We will talk about it later in the video. We are going to solve this problem in three steps. First, we will draw the influence line for bending moment at support B. Second, we will use the drawn influence line to determine the load pattern that causes negative bending moment at B to reach its maximum value. Third, we will load the beam using the pattern obtained in step two and analyze the structure in order to determine the maximum negative moment at the support. Step one, draw the influence line for bending moment at point B. To draw the influence line, we are going to place a fictitious hinge at point B. Then we draw the deformed shape of the beam due to a positive bending moment placed at the hinge. If you are not familiar with this qualitative approach for drawing influence lines, please review lecture SA16 through SA18. The bending moment at the left side of the hinge pushes segment AB down, like this. The bending moment at the right side of the hinge pushes segment BC down, which causes segment CD to bend upward and segment DE to bend downward. Since the beam is statically indeterminate, the influence line is drawn as a curve. If the beam was statically determinate, the influence line would have consisted of straight line segments only. The diagram tells us that bending moment at B is negative when a load is acting on segment. A, B, B, C, or D, E. Step two, determine the critical load pattern. Generally, the analysis and design of structural systems are governed by a set of specifications prepared by professionals who are tasked with providing guidelines for ensuring the safety of built structures. In the United States, the American Association of State Highway and Transportation Officials, AASHTO for short, has published a set of specifications that are widely in use for the analysis and design of highway bridges. According to AASHTO specifications, in order to determine the maximum negative moment at an interior support in a bridge, two types of loads need to be placed on the structure. A uniformly distributed load with a magnitude of 9.5 kN per meter and a pair of concentrated loads each having a magnitude of 80 kN. The distributed load simulates the load due to a series of trucks moving across the bridge in tandem. The concentrated loads simulate the weights of two individual trucks placed strategically on the bridge to induce maximum negative moment at the support. Since the influence line has negative values in segments AB, BC, and DE. In order to produce the maximum negative moment at B, we need to place the uniformly distributed load on these segments like this. Also, according to AASHTO specifications, a concentrated truck load needs to be placed at either side of support B, at the point where the influence diagram has its peak value. Since the influence line is nonlinear, the locations of these points are not known. They need to be determined. Let's label them x1 and x2. We can determine these distances using a search technique. To determine x1, we can place a unit load at various points on segment AB and analyze the beam for each load position. By comparing the moment values at B due to these loads, we can accurately approximate the position at which the influence line attains its peak value in the segment. The same process can be used to determine x2. Since this search technique involves analyzing the beam repeatedly, a rather time-consuming task, we have developed a software application that could facilitate this process. 
The app uses the slope deflection method to analyze continuous beams. You can download it from our website at this location. Let's see how we can use the app to determine distances x1 and x2. The application is an interactive notebook that allows us to specify the beam configuration and the applied loads. It then gives us the details of the slope deflection formulation for analyzing the beam, including joint rotations, member end moments, and shear forces, and the support reactions. In this case, we are only interested in bending moment values at the right end of segment AB. Let's start by determining the bending moment at B due to a unit load placed at the midpoint of segment AB. Using the app, we can define the position and magnitude of the applied load easily. Then, we read the value of the moment at B under tab 7. It is negative 1.81. Now, let's move the load 1 meter to the right and determine the resulting bending moment at B. The moment when the unit load is placed 10 meters to the right of A is negative 1.85. Again, increment the load position by 1 meter and calculate the resulting moment. The moment value at B when the load is located 11 meters to the right of A is negative 1.85. These values suggest that moment at B reaches its maximum negative value when the load is between 10 and 11 meters to the right of point A. Not surprisingly, if we evaluate the moment at X equals 10.5, we get negative 1.86. Let's assume this is a close enough approximation for the peak moment value. Therefore, we can conclude that when a unit load is placed 10.5 meters to the right of A, bending moment at B due to the load reaches its maximum negative value. We can repeat this process for segment BC in order to determine X2. If we place a unit load at the midpoint of the segment, the moment value at B becomes negative 1.33. If the unit load is moved to the left by 1 meter, the moment value at B becomes negative 1.39. At X equals 7, the moment value at B is negative 1.42. At X equals 6, we get negative 1.4. The tabulated data suggests that the maximum negative moment at B occurs when X is between 6 and 8. Although we can continue the search in order to pinpoint the location of the maximum moment with a higher accuracy, for our illustrative purposes, I say this is close enough. So, let's take 7 as the position at which the influence line attains its peak value in segment BC. Now we know the positions of the two concentrated loads that need to be placed on the beam per Ashto specifications. Combining this load pattern with the one for the distributed load, we get the critical load pattern for determining the maximum negative moment at B. Step 3. Analyze the beam. Let's use the app to analyze the beam under the combined loads. Here is the beam's definition. Here we've specified the concentrated loads, and here are the distributed loads. Then we get the target moment value under tab 7, it is negative 633.18 kilonewton meters. In summary, per Ashto specifications, the maximum negative moment at support B due to vehicular load is 1.5.